Okay, we're still in article 406. I think we've got three more videos before we get out of this article. So let's keep on going. 406, receptacles, cord connectors, and attachment plugs. 406.4, general requirements. Replacement CO slash ALR receptacles are now addressed, and some floor receptacles may now require GFCI protection. All right, let's see what it says. 406.4D talks about replacements of devices. Receptacle replacements must comply with 406.4D. AFCI or GFCI device, uh, GFCI devices must be installed in readily accessible locations. All right, so this is language that a lot of this anyway uh, probably doesn't necessarily need to be in the code. You know, remember the code applies to installations, right? When you go to 90.2A in previous versions, 90.2C in the 2023, it says in the scope of the code, the code covers the installation of conductors and equipment. If I'm removing a receptacle and installing a new one, then I need to comply, right? So if I'm installing a receptacle in a bathroom, it needs to be GFCI protected, right? We all know this. So do we really need to rule here in 406.4D that says, hey, if you're replacing a receptacle in a location that now requires GFCI protection, you must provide GFCI protection? Do we really need a rule that says that in Article 406? Probably not, but certainly doesn't hurt. So we have language here that talks about replacement receptacles. Now, I'm not going to read all of the replacement receptacle uh, requirements, just the ones that changed, right? But, you know, 406.4D4, for example, talks about GFCI replacements. 406.4D5 talks about tamper-resistant receptacles. And it says, if replacements are made at locations that now require tamper-resistant receptacles, then the replacement must be tamper-resistant, except, and we have an exception. So... Where do you need tamper-resistant receptacles? Well, you go into 406.12, and you're going to see a lot of locations that require tamper-resistant receptacles. And in fact, we'll talk about that here in a couple of videos from now when we talk about what changed in 406.12. But suffice it to say that item 1 that's been in the code since 2008 is dwelling units. If you're putting in a receptacle in a house, it's got to be tamper-resistant. This is saying if you replace a receptacle in a house, it has to be tamper resistant, right? Assuming, of course, that we're talking about 125 or 250 volt, 15 or 20 amp receptacles. However, replacements of non-grounding receptacles with another non-grounding receptacle, those do not have to be tamper resistant. Not very often that you see that. Usually if somebody has an old two-wire receptacle, somebody wants to remove it and replace it with a three-wire receptacle. And we talk about doing that, in 406.4 D4, which talks about GFCI, and it says, look, if you're replacing an old two-wire, you might be able to use a GFCI, but that's a different subject. This is saying, listen, for tamper-resistant, if you pull out a two-wire receptacle and replace it with another two-wire receptacle, does not have to be tamper-resistant because they don't make them. I mean, really, how many two-wire receptacles are really sold today in 2023? Very, very few. And it, it wouldn't be worth the manufacturers manufacturing tamper resistant receptacles that are two wire. Or item two, replacements of CO slash ALR receptacles on aluminum conductors. Those two do not need to be tamper resistant. Now, I'm just gonna be perfectly honest here. I'm not exactly sure why this was added. I believe it's simply that those receptacles are not manufactured. Now should they be manufactured? I mean, <laughs> it's a fair question. If people are getting injured on receptacles, well, then maybe we should make replacement receptacles be tamper resistant, even if they are two wire, or even if they are CO slash ALR receptacles. It's a fair debate, but I think right now the manufacturers are saying, listen, it, it, it would be a massive undertaking to make those things tamper resistant and cost effective. So we'll do it on the mass produced, you know, three wire, 120 volt, 15, 20 amp, 250 volt, one, you know, 15, 20 amp, but we're not doing it on every single type of receptacle. 406.4D8, receptacles with ground fault protection of equipment. Now, this is kind of a strange one, and I, 
I'm not even positive that there is such a thing. Maybe there is. But it says, listen, at receptacles, uh, if, recept if replacements are made at locations that now require ground fault protection of equipment, then the replacement must also provide ground fault protection of equipment. I don't know if they actually make a receptacle that provides GFPE protection. Maybe they do. But usually where you're going to find ground fault protection of equipment is one of three locations. Number one, you're going to see it on very large circuit breakers, 480 volt, 1000 amp or more circuit breakers. The GFPE will be set at like 1200 amps. Or you'll see it for snow melting and de-icing equipment. I live in Salt Lake City, Utah. We see a fair amount of de-icing equipment. So on roofs, they'll sometimes run heating cable to prevent ice damming and everything else from occurring. And that has to be provided with ground fault protection of equipment. That's a rule found in 426.28. The other main place that you'll see GFPE is at the boatyard, at the marina, like we're showing here in the photograph. So the shore power receptacles have to have ground fault protection of equipment. Now, again, I don't know that they actually make a ground fault protection of equipment receptacle. But this is saying, look, if you were to go over here, you got an old marina, an old boatyard, and you replace the shore power receptacle, you're going to have to provide GFPE protection, either a GFPE receptacle that probably doesn't exist, or a GFPE circuit breaker, which is what we're showing here in the picture. So there is our GFPE circuit breaker. That's probably what you're going to be installing if you're doing a replacement. The last thing they did here is two things in 406.4G for floor receptacles. It says protection must be provided to allow floor cleaning equipment to be operated without damaging the receptacle. That's not necessarily a new requirement, it's just new language. Previous versions of the code said something about protecting a standpipe. And I've never talked to anybody that knows what a standpipe for a floor receptacle is. Uh, it's probably a slang term, and we don't use slang terms in the NEC. We don't say, hey, protect your 1900 boxes. Well, that's a slang term, right? We call it a metal outlet box, not a four square box or a 1900. We don't call standpipes, standpipes, whatever that might be. So we're saying, listen, protect the floor receptacles so that floor cleaning equipment can operate without damaging the receptacle. Fine. The other thing that they did here, uh, in my opinion, is a little bit frustrating because I hate the way we're scattering GFCI requirements all through the code. You know, historically, we would go to 210.8 for the general GFCI protection requirements. And then we'd go into chapters 5, 6, and 7 for some of the oddities like swimming pools or elevators, things like that. Well, now we're putting GFCI protection requirements in the receptacle article, which I don't think that was ever really the way it was supposed to go. But here's what it says. At food courts and waiting spaces of passenger transportation facilities, all 125 volt, 15 and 20 amp receptacles in floors must now be GFCI protected in areas that allow food or drink. <sighs> I have major heartburn with this. Look, I, I understand the idea. Um, you know, obviously we're talking about airport terminals. That seems to be the main target. That's where I took this picture. You can see my laptop there with some wonderful reading material opened up. Now, I've got my computer plugged into a wall receptacle. So there is nothing special about that device. It has to be tamper resistant, 406.12. But it does not need to have GFCI protection in and of itself. You know, maybe around the corner there's a sink or something. But in and of itself, it doesn't require GFCI. Put that receptacle in the floor, and now it does require GFCI protection. Now, the reason that I'm not a huge fan of this change, I, I get it. I understand why it's there. But it talks about areas that allow food or drinks. How am I supposed to know what that area is as an inspector? I don't know where. <laughs> the, the, that's, you're, we're basing a rule on what the customer allows to occur. Well, you know, food or drink is allowed here, but it's not allowed there. When I'm wiring a place, I don't know that. When I'm designing it, I don't know that. So where do you put GFCI? Look, I, what I would tell you is if you're doing an airport terminal, you're probably going to have to have GFCI protection for all the receptacles in the floor. Now, how many of those are there really? 
probably not that many, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is going to require a bunch of GFCIs, but there you go. There's your changes in 406.4. We'll see you on the next video, which covers 406.6.